Solar is Sue Stover. <laughs> Green energy solutions. I dare you to say that 10 times in a row. <laughs> I couldn't, I'm telling you now. <laughs> so it's very exciting to have you on the show. And uh, I, I do want to, um, you know, show people that, the kinds of things that you do because you're, to me, a new phenomenon in the marketplace of solar. <laughs> so tell us how you got involved in solar. Well, I started out in residential sales about four years ago, um, just mostly selling solar thermal systems as an independent contractor. Um, as I was out in the field, I realized there were um, there were some, definitely some issues. Um, main thing that that I came across over and over again: homeowners being absolutely surprised that I showed up, and not only did I show up, but I show up on time. Um, Isn't that the truth? <laughs> yeah. Is that on the mainland or here? Here. Yeah. Okay. So you know, doing business on the mainland, there's a certain level of standard that customers expect, especially coming from a corporate background. So when I came here, I realized you know part of the key to this, my success would be you know, offering mainland standards with local style. Yeah, you, know, you can't do a, a pushy sales here or a pressure sales here, but if you offer service with honesty and integrity, um, people will come looking for you. And so that's how I just started in residential sales. I was getting all my referrals just by word of mouth, and I always came from the perspective of the customer's uh, needs come first. And so by providing, you know, customer service, um, that's how everything just kind of branched out from there. Word of mouth and going into associations and small buildings and things like that. Attending trade shows and hearing, you know, different technology mm -hmm. shows and things like that. And people recognizing me from there and bringing me into different meetings. And that's how we are here today. Yeah, okay. Well, I like that. So the first meeting, uh, you know, I mean, th that's relevant to this discussion anyway, is the rebuild meeting that DBED put together, yes. what, a week or two ago? Yes. And you, you were the star attraction at that meeting. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's the way it is. <laughs> so where was the meeting? Who, who showed up? What was it, the discussion? It was at the Hawaii Convention Center, and we had a, um, a big conference room there. We had, you know, all different kinds of people in the audience from, you know, HECO inspectors to different people from the Hawaii Energy Program, as well as other contractors and um, other people, you know, engineers and, and people like that who were interested in different technologies, as well as they were interested in learning about this program and how this was funded and things like that, because they might want to roll this out for their building as well. How, how did you, how did you, uh, uh, you know, get into this in the first place? I mean, how did you evolve into an expert in this area? Well, um, you know, as I started doing residential solar thermal systems, I was studying the system, you know, quite a bit. Um, working closely with Intra Island Solar, which is our local supplier. Um, Cully Judd. Cully Judd. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Cully Judd, He's for all man. your He's support. He is the man. <laughs> um, Inter Island is wonderful in the support that they provide for me, you know, technical information, um, as well as any kind of materials or things like that. Um, so how I got into it, like I said, you know, it just kind of branched off. I knew I wanted to do residential, and as I was get, learning the residential market, I always had my eye on the commercial market and doing things, you know, on a, on a bigger scale. And, um, and the condo market is kind of the commercial market. Right. There's a lot of people involved. There are entities. It's not just a homeowner. Correct. And so my vision was starting off in residential, and that was the, the big trend then. It was all solar hot water. Then I noticed it's slightly changing the next year to photovoltaic systems. Every, the prices were coming down, and everybody was looking for the next step. Then I noticed the trend changing again where buildings were started. I started getting a lot of inquiries from buildings. And, uh, and I just walked up to the Waikiki shore, you know, a year and a half ago. That happens to be my surfing spot there. Okay. And What's literally the I surfing just... Surfing spot threes? Threes. Okay. And I just walked into the building and I said, hey, you should let me, you know, present something to you for solar. And they said they had been looking into it already for the last four or five years. They had been so you, you really found a soft spot right away. And, well, I went back and forth to that building for about ten months. Um, it was not an easy sale. No, no, no. The board president is very savvy, and uh, he's been looking at technology for a long time. And there were three other bidders, and uh, the time came, you know, when we were bidding all against each other. I came in still at the highest bid, but I believe that he understood that I was coming from a quality installation. And, you know, of course, they compare um, the bids, and, you know, we look at the system and technology and the product and things like that. And uh, I was able to present them a good package with good funding also. That was the main thing, was how we were going to fund this program. Oh, yeah, let's talk about that. How, so, what, this was in the bid. 
Correct. So mm. this project was $505,000 for the system. Mm -hmm. It was funded by Bank of Hawaii's Equipment Lease Program mm -hmm. with Solar Tax Credit. Okay. And uh, Jay Kwok at Bank of Hawaii was mm -hmm. instrumental mm -hmm. um, in this process. So uh, what they did is the bank purchased the system and there were state tax credits. Now, Waikiki Shore being an AOAO building, it's considered a nonprofit. So the bank can only take the state tax credits and not the federal. So they took the 35% state tax credit and they applied it to the total lease amount. So it dropped the lease amount by the state tax credits. And then the bank entered into a, a, a lease with, I'm sorry, with the building the, entered a lease with, with the bank. Right, so the bank is, owns it and leases it Correct. to the building. It's a good Correct. security device. So it's typically a 10-year program, but Waikiki Shore, um, they actually wanted to accelerate the program to five years. Now, they actually need to have... to pay it off sooner. Correct. They actually have positive cash flow, so they were actually able to pay for this out of their own pocket, but they did not want to deplete their revenues that way. So they um, did the equipment lease program with the tax credits. Mm -hmm. There's, it's no interest, mm -hmm. and they're paying about the same as what their gas bill used to be. But they're paying a financing charge in there somewhere. Uh, there was, yeah, there's a small financing charge built into there, yeah. um, but overall, you know, the, the association thought it was definitely worth it. Yeah, well, so it's like leasing a car these days you know it's not a bad deal so oh, wow that's very exciting so you were really bringing a lot to the table the technology um, the uh, the finance arrangements and the guts to put it together <laughs> 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 which it took <laughs> so tell me how you put it together well, uh, there were so many different aspects, you know, Inter-Island played a key part because we, you know, they provided the materials. Um, so working with them and of course setting up terms, working with the contractor, um, and then, you know, working with the helicopter company, you know, they, they got all the permits for the, for the FAA and all that stuff. But it was a <laughs> lot of... What was the name of the helicopter? Paradise part? Helicopters. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, of course it was mainly just coordinating all these different vendors, you know, the delivery trucks to the different vendors that were on site. Um, it was just coordinating how all this was going to happen in schedule with uh, Fort Derussi because they have certain days when they're open and they're closed. And of course, trying to orchestrate all of this in the middle of busy Waikiki. On a weekday. On a weekday, yes. Because that's when people work. They work on a weekday. Right, usually. <laughs> <laughs> so give me a give me a vignette of what's going on. So here we are. It's 10 o'clock in the morning uh, or we've, whatever. We've and, got the whole Fort Derussi area taped off. We've got big flat liners taking up Kalia Road, waiting to enter. Um, we've got my ground crew uh, <laughs> trying to keep the people out of the area because you know people are stopping and walking by. They want to walk through the taped area. That people are still trying to access the beach. Um, of course. Yeah, waiting for, you know, the helicopter would come and go. The helicopter had to fly low fuel. The maximum lifting capacity for the helicopter was 2,300 pounds. And of course, all of our equipment weighed about 2,000 pounds. The tanks weighed 2,000 pounds. Margin. The uh, steel beams that we had to fly up weighed anywhere from 500 to 900 pounds. So the helicopter would pick up and then would go back and refuel and then it would come back several times. Um, and <laughs> so, you know, you can see. Heart in your mouth kind of thing. <laughs> kind of, yeah, all day I pretty yeah, much was yeah. on edge. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I was ecstatic when they dropped the last tank on the roof and the building didn't collapse. And <laughs> <laughs> And the helicopter was still aloft. Helicopter, <laughs> yes, and everybody was safe. The main thing fell on anybody. Oh <laughs> my God! The main thing was safety. Yes, yeah. the main thing that was the focus for all of us um, was safety. Yeah, but you see, you did it, and that means that you can try again. You can, you know, do other buildings. I'm going to do it again. Yeah, I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, well, it takes a, it takes something <laughs> extraordinary to set up a deal like this. So, what did they put on the roof, and and what did it mean for the building? Well, they put up, uh, basically because of the, the roof line, um, we could not drill or penetrate the roof the way it was. So we actually had to build a galvanized steel structure on top of the roof. So it's kind of like another roof structure on top of the roof. Yeah. And um, that's where we laid the, the collectors as well as the tank. Um, and you'll see I've got some pictures and things okay, like I'll that. Okay, I'll put which, them in the, um, in the video. Yes, yeah. which, which show the actual roof site. Basically, the roof was our construction site. Mm -hmm. Being 15 stories high, um, we had to construct everything on top of the roof. So, so okay, you put a steel structure up there. Yes. And, and then you put the uh, solar equipment on top of the yes. steel structure. Yes, so we didn't have to drill at every single point. Um, all we had to do is we had to penetrate at the posts. 
um, because right underneath where we were, uh, the roof, uh, right underneath that rooftop is actually the penthouse unit. And so because of the unit being right there, we had to really be careful yeah, about sure. the penetrations. That's the old problem in condos, especially penthouse condos. Anyway, so um, permits. So you, you had to get the FAA. Yes. Because it's, it's a city flight right yes. in the middle of Waikiki. Yes. Uh, you had to get Fort de Russie because you were using their, their area. There is a staging area. Um, and you certainly you had to get the Department of Planning and Permitting Absolutely. from the city and county of Honolulu. Yes. And that was the most interesting. Why don't you tell us what happened? Well, the most interesting thing there uh, when I got to the permitting department was that they informed me that this building is in the Waikiki Special Design District, so that I would also have to get a Waikiki uh, Special Permit. Um, they also uh, went on to inform me that anything on top of the roof in Waikiki has to be covered, so that I need to submit some kind of screening detail to cover <laughs> the solar hot water collectors. Uh, is this a um, great country or what? So I thought it was a joke, and you know, and I'm thinking, okay, let's get to the punchline, and it wasn't. <laughs> they were serious. They wanted me to cover the solar collectors. <laughs> um, so then I continued to say, you know, well, solar collectors need sun. And then it dawned on them that, oh, you're right, we cannot cover the solar collectors. <laughs> um, so I had to go about getting a, a special waiver, and they did grant me that waiver so that I could leave. I'm so glad they did. <laughs> so that we could leave the solar collector array open. Okay. Um, and we Closed, it would have given you 1% efficiency. Uh, then the building <laughs> owner would be very upset with me, and the I numbers would, wouldn't work very would well. not work, and I would probably never get another building again. Um, we did enclose the tanks, which was no problem, um, but the uh, solar hot water collectors are in open view, and it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. You mean aesthetically beautiful? Aesthetically beautiful. What does it look like? If you look out at it from the ocean, I can actually see it. My favorite surf spot is out at Threes, and I look at that building all day long, and I point it out to everybody and anybody who'll listen. Um, and it's just beautiful. You know, the way it's all lined up, it's 60 collectors, and, you know, it's, it's just, it looks like some kind of high-tech building, um, and it definitely, you know, shows the future of Hawaii. Yeah. This oceanfront hotel condo with beautiful solar hot water collectors. Yeah. To me, um, that's a statement of the future. Yeah. This reminds me of the windmills in Kahiaba uh, in Maui. Yes. You know, because some people say, oh, you know, they're windmills, they're so industrial, but not really. They're beautiful. Yes. They're like ballet dancers, yes. you know. You could watch them all day. Absolutely. <laughs> to me, it's a beautiful thing. And just to know how much um, oil we're reducing. Um, it's that to me is the most beautiful thing. How much are we reducing in the in the Waikiki Shore? Uh, the Waikiki Shore, their bill dropped more than fifty percent. So on average, the building was doing about fifty eight hundred to seven thousand a month, and the first month the solar went in, it dropped to three thousand eighty three. Mm -hmm. Second month twenty five hundred. Last month it dropped to twenty two hundred for the whole entire building, and they also have. Um, gas stove and gas dryer as well as the water heating so they're still running gas for their stove and dryer um, but the bill has still dropped dramatically so they got a call from the gas company yes suspicious call the eh? first <laughs> month the system went into service um, the bill dropped so dramatically they got a call from the gas company saying that they needed to come out and uh, check the meters, that they thought something was wrong. <laughs> and in fact, it was due to the solar hot water system. <laughs> so what do you think, you know, so, so you did you did PV2 now on top. So you did this solar, you know, traditional solar water heater, and then PV, what did you use the PV for? Actually, this building only had solar hot water. Oh, okay. It was only for solar hot water being the most efficient system there is. Okay. Um, so now the building uh, board president is looking to do uh, something else to reduce their electric bill. And now he wants to do wind turbines. Wind, so he's skipping the PV. Right, because he figures that the wind turbine would be more efficient because it would be generating wind, you know, electricity even at nighttime. Uh, uh, and true. and yeah. you know, as you know, what he wanted to do was maximize the roof space. Since mm -hmm. the solar hot water collector is taking up a majority yeah. of the roof, he wanted to implement something else that would be efficient in electricity. So how do you? This is another challenge for you. Right? I right, accept so? the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> so. So tell me, you know, what's the task exactly, and and how do you see it? Unfolding? Well, this turbine that I'm looking at doesn't have the typical footprint where you have to put it up on these high poles. Um, it actually can be on a lower ground and it's good and even in Waikiki is what they call a dirty wind zone so they don't have good wind because of all the other buildings that are there. Mm -hmm. um, but this particular turbine only needs a five mile, five mile per hour winds. Um, so that's why we're looking at this particular unit for Waikiki Shore. 
So, is it, but uh, is it one of these turbines which doesn't even look like a turbine? It doesn't look like a turbine. It looks like a spacecraft, actually. Yeah, like a, like a jet engine just some, some, sitting there. Correct. Without without any particular stilts underneath or anything like correct. that. Correct. Yeah, I've seen them. And, um, yeah, this will be, that will be very interesting. So you could actually make a material reduction in electrical use using that for, for the Waikiki Yes. Show. Mm. So, so uh, the board president, Rich Elliott, he has been, we've been discussing this for almost two years now, since the beginning of the solar hot water. And uh, so now that this is done, he's on me uh, for the win. Good, good, good for him, <laughs> good for him. Okay, so now, you know, that would be two very significant projects in Waikiki. And presumably other buildings will see, and, uh, and since you got through all the problems, uh, you know, you'll be able to do it in other places. Um, and what, what's interesting to me is that you're a one-man hyphen woman, <laughs> man slash woman uh, company. Yes. And so you're acting as a, essentially as a consultant, facilitating, uh, obtaining arrangements, arranging arrangements with contractors. Yes. With the building. Um, and then since you represent the building, uh, you'll be doing, the, you do the inspections, you make sure everything works. Yes. And I suppose you handle that issue about making sure they're there on time. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And that's, that's part of the thing is, you know, if, if I can be there, the building doesn't have to run around and try to contact this person or that person, and I do all of the, the legwork for them. Yeah, yeah. How do you motivate them to get there on time? <laughs> I have to say it off the air. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I got it. <laughs> but that's what it needs, you know. Yeah. And that works. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all of my the contractors that I work with, and I, you know, obviously I'm working with them for a reason, and that they already have some of these things, these visions, you know, of value and being on time and customer service and those things important to them. And so when I see, you know, similarities in that way, I figure we can have a symbiotic relationship, and that's why I work with the contractors, contractors that I work with. Yeah. So and then there's a certain you create a certain amount of uh, competition because they want to work with you, they want the business, so right. you, can, you can arrange your, your stable, your bull, bullpen of contractors yes. any way you want and get the best that way. Right, and so I have contractors even now seeking me out to say, hey, can you go and you know, submit a bid for this or that? But you know, again, I'm gonna look at who the contractor is. I, will turn, I would rather turn down a job than just accept, accept a job um, so it goes in and the installation is not quality. Um, I don't want to have my name on a project like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, that's, I'm really impressed. So I have turned down jobs before where I feel that maybe the installation is being compromised, um, and, and it, then I, in that case, I'll just politely decline the bid. So now what about straight <coughs> PV? Have you been working with that in other buildings? Yes. Um, so I've done, obviously, you know, lots of photovoltaic for residential uh, systems, and I've also done a few for commercial systems. Um, and in other cases, I will contractors will come to me where they've actually closed a system or closed a, a sale um, but now they need assistance in installation so they'll look to me to outsource the installation and I'll help them with, with situations like that. Okay have you worked on the net metering arrangements? Yes. So um, I currently do all of the the NEM agreements to mm -hmm. ECO mm -hmm. um, and of course you know systems large commercial systems I have to do the NEMs for those also but yes um, net metering is that's definitely the number one thing customers are always asking about. And since the feed-in tariff was just approved recently, um, a lot of these large warehouses and commercial buildings will be, will be looking at one or two of the options. So what I hear you <coughs> saying is that you're, you're going to migrate this to, or at least you're going to include industrial projects, um, serious business, business structures. Correct. So I'm currently, I have some bids right now that I'm getting ready to submit for large photovoltaic systems. Some are very custom. And so, you know, their rooftop is, they just have no capacity. Um, so you have to build standalone systems, but you also have to think about aesthetics because some of these places are very, you know, high aesthetics. So we have to build certain awnings or structures that tie into that. Yeah. And then you have the problem as you had on Waikiki Shore, making sure that that there's no damage to the existing roof Absolutely. because those roofs are expensive yes. and repairs are expensive and, and warranties can be lost. Absolutely. Uh, or sometimes they just don't pay off and, right. and then you wind up having to fix the roof. Right. Um, so uh, you, I guess you deal that by watching, <coughs> deal with that by watching the contractor very carefully. Right, and of course, you know, like you I said, you walk the roofs yourself. You oh, absolutely. There, yeah? Yes, I'm up on the roof. I climb the ladders. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> yes, I'm up there. Yeah. All right. You were saying you'll find me either on the roof, uh, at the building department, or in the water. One of those three what places. Are the, uh, the threes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> 
So wow, this is this is great. You know, I mean, what I what I what interests me about, as I said, is that you're forming a new level of activity, a new level of business activity, if you will, and you're making the whole system more professional, perhaps more reliable for the consumer, including business consumers, uh, and maybe that's where it's all going. You know, up till now, up till the advent of people like you, um, you know, it was all the contractor and the owner. And sometimes the contractor satisfied what the owner expected and sometimes. Sometimes not. And what I found in my residential sales when I started out a few years ago was that the homeowner was always at the mercy of the contractor. You know, they were at their mercy of when, whenever they showed up, they might have one little thing left to fix, you know, but it could be weeks before they get there. Yeah. Or maybe they have a leak in the middle of the night and they can't get a hold of anybody. Yeah. Um, so I really, I, you know, I realized it's so backwards, you know, it should be customer driven and cus the customer should always come first. And so that's how I kind of... Um, well, they need that because, the, you know, you can assume the customer is naive about this. They it's are. It's an area of expertise. And there was so much information at the time. You know, tax credits were changing, incentives were changing, and there was just a lot of confusion about what was out there and what was available. And even the contractor themselves, because I would come up against several different bids, you know, even in the residential market, and I always noticed there were mistakes. It was the wrong collector, or it was the wrong size tank, or ooh, the wrong ooh, sun and zone. That, and that's the gift that keeps on giving. Then it, you know, it goes in, and then they have to come back and take it out and put in something else. Yeah, if, you know? it, yeah, if anybody can find them. Right, so. right. And I've heard numerous stories from homeowners where they just disappear. Yeah. And it's usually, you know, um, grandma and grandpa somewhere, and, you know, they've been taken advantage of, yeah. and nobody can find the contractor. So uh, you also offer financing arrangements, which I think is very interesting and, and, uh, and appealing in the marketplace. Tell me what you offer and how you put that together. Well, uh, for the residential market, you know, Inter-Island offers a, a no-interest financing program for residential systems. Um, for commercial systems, it's a little different story. Obviously, we're talking, you know, a, a higher dollar amount. Um, so well, who I've been working with lately, um, very successfully, is with Jay Kwok. Um, he was able to provide funding for me for the Waikiki Shore. And so moving forward, I have a couple of other buildings that I'm working on. So I'll be working closely with Jay and helping, uh, he'll help me find uh, another kind of equipment lease program with solar tax credits. That's great. Because again, you know, if you make it easy for the consumer, he's more likely to do it. I think, I think people recognize it's a highly specialized area and they, uh, they will either have to learn it themselves to be sure everything is going mm -hmm. well, or hire somebody like you and you know, rely on your expertise and credibility. So how, how do you get so expert? Do you, 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 you know, go home at, at night and read books? What? I, I read books. I read a lot on different websites. Um, I work, again, closely with Inter-Island and the Sun Earth Factory. And they help because they, they're, they're the old-time experts. Absolutely. Anytime I have questions on certain things, you know, incentives that are changing or things like that, um, I can always contact somebody at Inter-Island, and they're very supportive in helping me with information. So what about the neighbor islands? Are you are you uh, making deals on the neighbor islands? Uh, you know, I have been invited to come out to the neighbor islands to spec different jobs. I've done a couple of project management jobs out there also. Um, right now, I want I'm focusing on you know Oahu, and the contractors that I'm working with now actually have branched out to the outer islands. Um, so they've actually talked to me about Maui and. Um, Big Island and things like That's that. That's interesting. So that you you bring them in, but then they bring you along. Right, right. <laughs> it's totally symbiotic. Yes, yes. <laughs> I like that. So we realize there's a need for each other. You know, yeah. there's an, I, I have needs for qualified contractors, and they have a need for a qualified, um, con, you know, consultant or salesperson. Yeah. Oh, exciting. So, what kind of a PV do you recommend? Uh, you know, those cells are changing all the time. Uh, the technology is dynamic, um, and the price variation can be yes. substantial. Uh, so if I have, a, say, a, a talking residential for a minute, although that's not your favorite subject then, uh, <laughs> if I have a residence, you know, a substantial residence, and I want to put on PV cells, so what kind of cells? Well, and, and I'm not too concerned about the price. Sure. I just want the longest life, most efficient cells. The, the main thing, you know, when uh, homeowners come to me about photovoltaic systems um, and what should they use, because there's, you know, there's a big range of uh, manufacturers out there. Um, I talk about, you know, I look at where is it made 
and not only where is it made, but where is it assembled. Mm -hmm. So you'll have, you know, lots of uh, manufacturers say, oh, it's made in the USA. But then when you look at the fine print, they're actually assembled in Thailand um, or China or something mm -hmm. like that. And so, you know, for me, it's important for me to use a product that's made in the USA, assembled in the USA, um, because they have different quality control factors and also trying to process a warranty. These modules, PV modules, are warrantied 25 years. Mm. So you can imagine, let's say, 20 years from now, if I'm using a, a China-made uh, module, how in the world am I going to contact this China company to process my warranty claim? No way. Right? Yeah. Um, and so that's one of the key things for me as far as, you know, um, functionality and mechanical characteristics, they're all pretty similar. Um, but what I look at is uh, where is it made, how can I have access to warranty claims and things like that, who is the local distributor and how do I have access to them. What about, uh, what about European stuff? Europe, European stuff is great. Um, I know Europe is right now leading the way in renewable energy, unfortunately. You know, it should be us. It should be us. Um, and I do know, just a little while ago, there was a shortage of cells because Europe had such a high demand. Yeah. Um, so there are some great uh, companies in Europe also. Um, I'm working locally with um, Solar World. That's a, a big module company that uh, Inner Island mm -hmm. works with. They've been working with them since the 70s. They're a supplier. They're a supplier, yes. Um, and again, I like their made in San Diego, assembled in San Diego. And so that's, that's typically the module of my choice. So tell me, where do you think the industry is going to go? You know, and where do you think your slice of the industry is going to go in the next five, ten years? It's, it's a fast-moving deal. Is. And, um, you know, I think we ought to try to figure out where it's going to go. I know you think about this. <laughs> uh, well, what, what I'm thinking is, you know, in the future, I envision that we would be, uh, you know, working a little closely with the building department, especially, you know, as I go into larger construction of things, um, I would Which think... Which is where you're likely to go. That's where I'm where I'm looking to the rooftop stuff. Yes. Not open field like, uh, you know... You know, I'm open to that ground mount system. You're open to it, open field. I'm open to open fields. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, especially solar farms. Mm. That is something that I, I envision in the future that I, I would love to uh, work on a project like that. Mm. Um, so, you know, it's not just limited to buildings and rooftops and things like that. Um, you know, my it would be really neat for me to work on a project where we have to custom build things you know, building, maybe a building with one side of the wall is a, is a PV module or um, those building integrated PV, idea. you know. Yeah. So there's just so many different things. And, and Hawaii is really the big focus for renewable energy because our energy rate is so high. Yeah. Um, so I envision working on some um, it, projects like that where, you know, again, it's going to be challenging um, because of different aesthetics or things like that. But that's, that's where I see the future for me is, is working in. So you're um, saying you go down to the permitting people. And, yes. uh, and now, you, you know, I suppose that it's different permitting issue if you have an open field and if you have a rooftop. Right. So open uh, field would mean like sewer lines, easements, you know, oh what's yeah, the, well, the real this, property this, issues. Yeah, yeah, the soil, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the, the industry then in five, ten years, there'll be more installations on more, more buildings More installations. For sure. I imagine uh, associations, you know, big homeowners associations. Um, will start including it. I mean, they already are. Yeah. Uh, you know, part of the state law that was passed with solar hot water is mandatory. Now there's these, you know, brand new developments that are coming up where photovoltaic is coming standard package now, as well as the hot for water. New, for new, new condo new construction project. homes, yes. Oh, homes. Yes. Not condos. Not condos, Coming but homes. soon. Yeah. Coming uh, soon, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> yeah hopefully. Um, but where I see the industry going in the future is, like I said, more buildings, definitely. Um, right now, I think the buildings are still just trying to, you know, find a way to reduce their energy costs without having to put forth a big investment. Um, or right now, kind of just ignoring, like, maybe this will just all go away. Um, but what I envision in the future is, you know, more buildings, more hotels, more condos. Um, and, you know, hopefully tax credits staying in place. Mm. Oh, that's, that's important. That's the yeah, most that's important thing. That's the motivating, thing. incentivizing feature. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, what I see also is, is hoping that, that the incentives get better. Um, from, from the federal government right now, we're in place for till, till 2016. Um, but I'm hoping that the, the state, people are always inquiring what's going to happen to the state well, tax credits. you can credit. always go down and lobby the legislature. <laughs> Everybody else does. Right, right. I'll bring my sleeping bag <laughs> my on my, way to, inevitable sleeping on my bag. way to the building department. <laughs> 
Well, and your company. Tell me a little, you know, about what you think your company will evolve to. Will Will you stay as a as a you know a, a single entrepreneur person, or or do you think you'll have an organization soon enough? Well, you know, I don't want to get to the point, you know, where I'm a big organization. I like staying small because I think that's part of the thing is the face to face time that I have with my customers, and being able to you know provide them special service and be on site all the time. And I, you know, I fear fear if I get too big, then that that's where we start missing out on that that face to face time. Yeah, um, I am right now looking for a couple of interns to help me with some paperwork and things like that, and um, filling out different things for uh, Hico as well as the building department, and even taking them along with me rooftops to do measurements. Oh, and sounds like, like fun. Do you yeah. Like, do you like heights? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. If I run into anybody who might be an intern for you, oh, I'll send them your way. Thank but you. if you run into anybody who might be an intern for, a, you know, a Think Tech Hawaii in video, you send them my way. You got it. That's a deal. <laughs> That's a deal. So I definitely know I, I do have to branch out a little bit and, and get some support. Um, but I, you know, like I said, the main thing I want to do is still provide that quality assurance. And I think the only way for me to be able to do that is to still stay involved. Yeah. Well, good luck to you, Sue. Thank you very it's much. It's a great thing you're doing. Thank you. And we'll be following it. I want to see it thrive. <laughs> I think it's good for the industry. I'll keep you posted on <laughs> the next two buildings that I'm working on. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs>